Shout out Footballer's Diary. Shout out Footballer's Diary. All right, so we're back with Footballer's Diary. We have Fritz Volmar. Uh, man, it's a real pleasure to have you on. Uh, I've been really excited about kind of getting to hear a little bit more of your story. So thank you for getting on with us today. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I know it took a little bit of time. Uh, no worries, man. You're a busy man. I get it. No, no worries. Um, and just to get, you know, just to jump right in and get started, can you tell a little bit, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your background, where you grew up playing, um, things like that? So, I would say, answer your question, lived in Peoria, Illinois, this is going on 13 years, so I grew up playing soccer there, um, you know, played a lot of with youth teams, youth leagues, um, you know, traveling, Chicago, St. Louis, all around, and then we hit eighth grade, and I was like, you know, I think I, think I want to pursue this a little bit more, so out of the blue... I, there was the you know academy called St. Louis Scott Gallagher up there, mm -hmm. and I asked my parents and I was like, hey, can I go? Can I go try out for their U15 team? And it was honestly just I wanted to see where I kind of matched up with some of those guys. So you know, funny story was that this it was on a Sunday and my team in Peoria had a tournament, and of course it was already going to be close. We were driving from Peoria to St. Louis, it was about a three hour drive, whatever, and the championship game went into overtime. So I'm already stressing, like I don't know the I don't know these St. Louis guys very well. So my mom's, you know, texting one of them, like, hey, we're gonna be late. So I get to the tryout like 30, 40 minutes late. So I'm like, there's no way. Whatever. <laughs> so I hop I hop in the drill, whatever, we're just doing passing. I'm like, okay, you know, it's fine, whatever. And we then after that we went straight to scrimmaging. I don't know what it was, whatever. <laughs> I you know, I literally was I was exhausted after the game. I don't know what happened. But this kid from uh, Minnesota was also trying out, and it almost felt like a flow state. Like, we were playing, I was playing winger, he was playing left back, and it was just one, two, one, two, one, two. Our team was going, whatever. And, I, you know, I, I was, flow, like, flowing. Literally, I don't, I couldn't tell you, uh, like, what happened. I just remember we won every game, and we scored, and that played great. So, I remember I got there so late that I didn't even give the director of coaching the, um, what do you call I didn't give the director of coaching like the waiver or whatever so I went to go give it to him he was like hey would you mind coming back tomorrow and I was like of course like that you know it'd be an honor whatever so I go back the next day play well score a couple of goals whatever and then after that I was like hey whatever it, you know I tried I did whatever and actually down in Miami we were there for a family vacation sitting outside of I think what it was it Pollo Tropical Okay. My mom gets a phone from the director and is like, hey, you made the team. And wow. my mom had no idea what was going on. She's like, what's the arrangement, whatever. So, like, we really, so we finally, we looked at it around June. You know, this was back in June of, uh, I was almost four or five years ago. And we were like, I don't know if it'll work, whatever. But things just kept falling into place. We were able to find a place in St. Louis. We, you know, everything just kind of came together. And so my mom and I moved up to St. Louis, but my dad still lives in Peoria. And I was able to join Gallagher's Academy. You know, COVID messed up a couple of things, but I was able to play there for two years. And then St. Louis City, the MLS team there, they started their academy my U17 year. I was able to try out for them, made the team, did really well with the U17s, got promoted to play with their second team for the for their first inaugural season, whatever, made my first, yeah, first pro debut, their first game, my first academy kid to play, whatever. No way. And then, yeah, first academy kid to touch the field in MLS Next Pro and just for St. Louis City, so um, their amazing. second team. So, yeah, so then um, I went back to, with the 17s for GA Cup, did really well there. Right. Um, there was this another thing, MLS Next Fist did really well there. And playoffs, we lost the first game but had a great game. Somehow from center back, scored and assisted twice around there. So did really well. And in that same week, so that was 
June of, I'd say, two years ago, I was able to get called up to my first national team call up to the U.S. 19s um, and get selected to the MLS Next All-Star game within the same week. Really? So, no it was, way. Yeah, That's it amazing. it was really it was really like seven eight months where I just kind of everything just kind of took off and you know ever since we've kind of been on an upward trajectory. I mean, the, the funny thing is during that whole little period of time from the All Star playoffs, the All Star game, or to National Team Camp, the All Star game, I had a broken wrist and I didn't wow. even know about it. Like, yeah. So the um funny story is. Right before national team, I, I broke my wrist during, I'm actually right before playoffs, which was late June, but it didn't hurt that bad, whatever. I was playing through it. I just taped it a little bit, whatever. And then they gave the academy kids a little break. So the trainer was like, you know what? Come back two weeks, whatever. If it's still hurting, we'll have you go see the doctor. So of course it was still hurting. Went to go see the doctor and it's like, you have a little, you have a tiny little sprain, whatever. So or a little injury. And so I got this massive brace, whatever. And they're like, you can keep playing. And as I'm driving home from practice, my, you know, I was still so young. My mom was taking me home. Um, I get a text message from our trainer. And he's like, Hey, just thinking about this national team camp, you should be fine just wearing the brace. So I was like, I like, I had no clue to his talking. I was like, okay, whatever. I always wear it. So I had no idea what he was talking about. And then you know, two hours later, I'm in calculus tutoring. It's like, you know, er early afternoon session. And the academy director calls me and I was like, hey, I'm literally in calculus tutoring. You got to give me like 30 minutes to finish up, whatever. And then I call, I call him back. I was like, hey, anything wrong? He's like, no, it's actually great. You've been called into the national team. I was like, oh, great. Awesome. You know, when, when's this happening? He's like, well, the camp started you know, two days ago. And I was like, okay. And I was like, so, you know, what do I need to do? Do I need to get on a flight? Whatever. Like they'll handle all of that. You just got to get the paperwork done, whatever done. So my mom's, you know, out running errands, whatever. My dad's at work. So I call them. I'm like, Hey, we got to get this paperwork done. Whatever. Like, you know, all of us are kind of scrambling, whatever. I'm, you know, nowhere close to packed. So I get everything ready. Um, and then they got my flight and I was, you know, in LA at 9 a.m. in the morning, ready for training, whatever. And, you know, it was a great week. I think that was probably one of the best weeks I've had. Um, soccer, I got to play with a lot of good players, whatever. And then following week was the MLS Next All-Star Game, another great experience. And from then on, it's kind of, you know, it's been an upward trajectory. Um, you know, another national team camp the fall year in January um, in Miami, actually. It was a great, you know, another great camp. And then this past, well, I guess it's last year, but in March, I got to go down to Argentina with, um, with the team and play against Argentina and the second team down there. And that was a really great experience. Um, you know, I, honestly, probably one of the best cup weeks of my life. Um, and then now I'm here at Northwestern um, and you know, doing my thing. It's been good. I had a good season and you know, really just enjoying the time I'm having right now. That's amazing, bro. And there, there's a lot to unpack there, but it's just like, yeah. it's crazy how, especially in soccer, right? And, and maybe in other yeah. things, it's the same, but how in such a short time, like things could change, right? As long oh, yeah. as you're prepared and ready for those opportunities oh, yeah. that might pop up. Oh, yeah. um, so for people who don't know, St. Louis is one of the most historic places in the country for soccer. Yeah. Um, it's one of the first places that had soccer in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, it actually had soccer before Brazil. A lot of people don't know yeah. that. Um, what is it like playing in such a historic city uh, for soccer and coming through like an academy there? Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's been a complete honor. I've always... Um, you know, even when we started, there was always a little bit of pressure, you know, first, first academy team, first U17 team. So we had a U17 and U16 team. And, you know, obviously the U16 doesn't do as much as U17. So, I mean, every weekend we're traveling, whatever, we're going places, games, whatever. And then with the second team, I think that was really when it started to hit me that you know, the scale that people in St. Louis really wanted to come out. I remember that was the first game. It was, I think, at 8,000, 9,000 people there packed into like a little college stadium, the 
MLSNX Pro commissioner was there. I mean, stadium was packed. And I, you know, at the time, I'd only probably played max in 200, 300 people. Right. So, you know, when I saw that, I was like, wow, you know, that the influence that St. Louis has on soccer is pretty, it, you know, it's pretty impactful. I, people really get into it. I obviously was at a couple of the first team games this year. And I mean, the atmosphere is just incredible there. I was sold out just about every single game. Doesn't matter if games on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Sunday night, it, it'll be packed every single time. So I think honestly, the for so far, I hope to go back and represent them more. But just from where I'm from, I, you know, it's been an honor to represent them, put them on a certain stage, play for them. I, you know, made great connections with the people there. And it, it's just been a great time playing there. So, so when you, and Scott Gallagher is, is also like, you know, a, oh, yeah. a, um, historic academy. Um, but so you, always, you didn't always play defender, right? You can you used to play winger. Oh. Yep. So I used to play winger. I played winger my first year at um, played winger my first year at Gallagher, and then I switched one a, a player left, and just as kind of fun in one scrimmage, I switched to center back, and I just killed it back there. Honestly, you know, I was it was kind of the you know, I'm, I'd say I'm pretty fast, whatever. So I'm no, fast. You're, no, you're really Easy. fast. <laughs> yeah. Tech, you know, technical enough. So moving the ball was, ever, I just had to understand the positioning and I kind of just, it, it was really good there. I played a lot there, had a lot of good minutes, especially being left footed. You know, you don't always find yeah. you want to have a left footed player on the left side. So it wasn't awkward for the, you know, right footed center back to play there, but played really well there. And then, Ever since I got to St. Louis City, I've kind of been going back between left back and center back. You know, I think they still, obviously, I've played center back, so they want to utilize me there. But also at the same time, I can get up and down. So depending on personnel, whatever, I can always yeah. switch to that left back role. And here at Northwestern, I've played a lot more left back and even high up the field at almost a winger position sometimes. Well, it's always good to have multiple positions, but oh yeah, one thing that I really like, you know, soccer evolves, and you know, you have these, um, you know, this new age of center backs that you know back in the day, if you weren't like six two, six three, you mm -hmm. weren't playing center back. But I think That's what it. soccer's come to realize, and almost like basketball, right? Like mm -hmm. you're starting to see like these really athletic players who are oh, able yeah. to play different positions. So for center back, mm -hmm. you know, you have guys like Lucas Hernandez or um, the center back from Man City. Um, oh, man, why is this? Um, uh, uh, Gavardio um, or uh, Ake. Ake, too, Ake. Like yeah. Yep. He, he, yep. He's like, uh, I wouldn't say you guys are similar players, but a little bit. Yep. I think you're actually more, more more athletic than him even. Um, and, and just as technical. So, you know, and that's, you know, that's, I mean, it's super impressive. Um, but these center backs who can bring the ball out, who have the, who have that. Look, I always say, like, I would, sometimes when you have these center backs who are 6'3", six, 6'4", six, they don't pivot well. Yep. And you sure. lose something uh, when they're trying to cover these smaller, you know, attacking mids and strikers. Yeah. And so to have you who is, uh, uh, you know, so, you know, so fast, can pivot well, super technical, reads the game well, and you have the vertical to get the height that any of those guys were at anyway. Oh, yeah. So it's like, oh, yeah. it's like, it, it becomes almost like this, this new age of center back almost becomes a, uh, uh, you know, a, a whole different role than we're used to seeing. Mm -hmm. um what does that mean for the game of soccer uh and yeah. for you as that type of player yeah i mean i think it like you said it, the game's always transitioning forward the you know from the 90s the you know zero toes to the 10s the 20s it's always been progressing forward i think i i think i see like i think of a player like kind of david alba plays for real madrid he can play left back center back even slide into the six if he needs to. I think it just kind of shows the versatility that players come with now. Like, obviously, you're always going to have your prototypical winger, your nine hold up or just a finisher, you know, the calm six, the the ten, the eight. You know, you're always going to have these 
prototypical players, but what you're seeing now are people who can shift into any position. I think of, you know, Camavinga and Chuomeni on Real Madrid. Camavinga, that, I mean, I'm pretty sure he played six, you know, five, six positions this year already. Mm-hmm. So I think the game is progressing forward to, obviously you're always going to have people who fit the prototypical, you know, 6'3", yeah. slower, yeah. high game IQ, center back. Yeah, you know you're gonna have the pacey, you know, five nine uh, wingers getting up and down, or the outside backs getting up and down. But I think more we're seeing that more players can fit into different positions, and it, it's almost like you're cultivating a soccer player. You're not just cultivating a center back, or not cultivating a six. You're cultivating a soccer player who can go anywhere, and and the uh, you know I think somebody said is the the best resources availability. You know, if you can play, if say, you know, you can't play left back, boom, I can play the six. Boom, I can play the eight. Boom, I can slide the center back. Boom, I can play to play winger. It, it's hard to almost leave you out when you can play multiple positions. Yeah, yeah. No, it's such a good point. And then you have coaches, you know, uh, uh, like Pep, who, who literally, you know, rotate in the game, exactly. you know, depending on the shift. Yeah, exactly. So it, it, it's, it's really... Um, I really love seeing uh, uh, players uh, like yourself uh, who who bring a whole different look at, and are part of this wave of uh, center backs who are just so impressive, uh, or defenders, I guess you would even just say, just because you, you're so versatile. Um, what do you think is the uh, your best attribute if you were to like explain who uh, to someone like who'd never seen you play? Yeah, I would say. I would say there are a lot of things that I like to pride myself on, but I think 1v1 defending, um, I think 1v1 defending and almost this, it's never, you never want to be losing in a game, but there's this thing that always happens and it happened most recently here at Northwestern where my friend calls it the the takeover mode. Like what we start losing a game is like, you just almost see an increase in your volume. It doesn't matter if you're cramping, whatever. You just want to go win the game, whatever the cost. And I'm probably, I may be one of the sorest losers in the world. So I hate losing and that's why. But I think outside of that, I'd say 1v1 defending. I think almost as a defender, and I love scoring. I love getting high in the tech. But I think one thing that I'm like, oh, I do love defending is I think always getting into a tackle and winning the tackle and going forward is probably one of my favorite things. I think it's like know, the just, most, it's like it's the same excitement as a goal, right? It's like, Oh yeah, it is. You know, you, someone's going boom, slide tackle, you take the ball, go the other way. Boom. You stop a shot. I think that's one of my favorite things to do. Yeah. And I think, I think it's almost, I think it's almost as great as a goal. You won't get as much glory for it. But I think it's almost as great as a goal. Me too. Me too. Um, so tell us a little bit. So I, I think it's, uh, your family's alma mater, but, um, so you definitely, uh, I would assume that you had a lot of offers or yeah. other offers. Uh, why Northwestern sure. and uh, what's special about that team? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think my parents, it's funny. My parents, obviously, like you said, both of them came here. And I think one thing, it was, the funniest thing, I, they never, they never were, they never put pressure on me to come here. It was like the kind of the last thing they did. They wanted me to explore my options. They wanted me to choose a school that I liked and also felt like if I was going to be playing soccer here, it might as well be as, you know, be as good academically. So I think I honestly, I really liked the school and I came and visited and I loved the coach here. Um, Russell Payne, you know, great guy. I know him through the national team system. I he's just made my experience so good and so great and I love the coaching staff and I just think he's a guy that so far we've had great a lot of great talks a lot of good coaching moments he, I think he's he's one of the guys who I think can prog- keep progressing my future um even farther and I you know I'm uh, at the same time I love to be out there but I'm also a quiet person and I'm okay kind of being by myself. And some of the guys I met through who would be coming in with my class, I've gotten to know some of them extremely well. I got to know them before I came here. And we really, you know, we really just bonded over over soccer, over school, how much we sometimes didn't want to do school, you know, just 
just anything. I think, um, I think that honestly, that's, that was one of the reasons why I chose here. And I think just the commitment to trying to push players to the next level that my coach Russell has shown is something that I, you know, really enjoy. I, you know, they didn't, Last year, they didn't do as well as, you know, a lot of people were expecting. Like, Fritz, why are you going Northwestern, Northwestern, what? And I was like, I think the coach has a vision, and he wants to play a certain style of football that I want that I want to be a part of. And I think it showed this year that when you have the right people, stuff starts to go starts to go the right way. That's awesome, man. I, I, I think that's such a, like, a mature and, like, thoughtful answer. Um and uh reasoning um because culture is uh very important in soccer mm -hmm. you know you see it as soon as like a coach changes uh there's sometimes big you know big things that change and one thing that i i really like um uh, is somebody told me uh, we were discussing you know uh soccer and education and they said how you do anything is how you do everything right mm -hmm. and what he was saying is like if you strive for academic excellence that's how you're going to be in soccer also yeah, exactly you know yep, exactly it, it, it's so underrated for people but it how you do anything is how you do everything um so i think that's excellent man um so i love d1 soccer um i think it's a, a like such an exciting landscape um mm -hmm. it's different than the rest of the world oh yeah but, oh yeah but it's cool sure oh yeah for sure it's, you know, it's been a, honestly, I came here and the first, like, I, I was honest, my, I always talk about with my teammates, I joke about it with everybody. And I was like, the first month in a couple of days here, I was like, I, I was considering if I was, you know, I consider myself to be decent at soccer. I was like, am I even decent at the sport? It just was such an adjustment to, for me. Um, it's right surprising at the how it, high the level is, right? It was, surpri it was surprising. It's, it's a little, it's a lot more physical. Um... You know, I was really surprised. I came in, I was like, you know, I don't know, whatever. And I was just, I was just waiting for me to find my stride. Yeah, you know, I think that was the biggest thing. The first couple preseason games, was like, eh, whatever. First season game was all right. And then I think by game three or four, honestly, of the regular season, like it took three or four games, I finally started to understand it, to play it, and really get into it. I think. We hit game, game three was all right, and we hit game four. And I was like, you know, I, it was almost like you strapped in and were ready to take off. Like, I was like, all right, here we go. Let's start moving forward. So I think we had a, we had a pretty good season. I think we went start first 12 games undefeated. I think we had 10, 10 wins, two ties. So I think, you know, the team, team was great, kept encouraging me, whatever. And, like I said, I hit that point. I was like, we're here. Like, let's let's get to work. Let's get going. So, you know, really, really good um, season, really good players, and a really good team. So I always ask everybody, and uh, because a lot of people don't realize how, like, serious the culture of D1 soccer is. Has yeah. Was there any games or any situations that like surprised you like uh, like fan wise, culture wise, like, you know, any crazy things have happened? Yeah, I mean, yeah, a couple. I think I, I love like I love away games. I love the chirps. I love whatever. Like I just sit there and laugh during the game. I think our third game, I think we we're playing uh, um, Wisconsin, Milwaukee or something. And some guy was like, you look so young. And I was like, I, I don't know. How, I don't know if that's a chirp or like what's going on. But I was like, thank you. I mean, I think that means I'm doing something right out here. <laughs> Even though I'm, if I look young to you, I think that means I'm doing something right. And I think the the biggest games were, or the games that I love the most, obviously, you know, home games, you always want to defend your home turf. But I think the games against Maryland and Penn State, which even though we lost, I, I, you know, I love walking into a stadium Friday night, 7 p.m. game under the lights. I, I don't think there was, you know, Maryland packed the house. It was a massive game. I think it was our second Big Ten game. You know, there's nothing better that for me to get into, you know, I start standing there starting 11 and, you know, you take a look around and every, you know, every single seat looks full. You got you know kids behind the be or behind the goal chirping you whatever. I mean for me it just it just kind of gets me going like it and then especially to win 
there. We didn't win the Penn State one, but that that one was annoying. But I think the win win away uh, it at night. I think it's an uh, like an unreal feeling. I think you know it's a little it it gets a little rowdy. You know, it gets rowdy. Like away. Like- yeah, like you said, it gets rowdy. People, people get mad. People start yelling. But I think, I like, I, I love it. it you know, it kind of, it gets me going. So I really, I really enjoy playing those away games. We, we had somebody on who was uh, telling us that uh, at Maryland, uh, they knew the players' addresses. Yeah, and, and they would like, yep. like chant out their addresses. I was like, that's intense. Oh yeah, oh yeah. No, our goalie. They got what was that? They got his phone number. They got his what? sister's phone number. No, um, what? they got his sister. They got the address. Um, so the uh, goalie was chirping the whole time. They got the center backs. You know, I was, I was a little, I, you know, I was playing on the outside, so I wasn't right behind the student section. But I mean, I would have, I would have liked to see what they come up with. But I, I was joking with our trainer. It was uh, the Tuesday before the game was on Friday. He was joking. He was like, you know, you might go, might need to go make your Instagram private. You know, they're gonna look, <laughs> see, see who's starting games, and they'll find anything that they can, you know, that they can chirp you with. So I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll embrace it, whatever. So I just left it public. That's whatever. awesome. But I, I was that. like, you know, I, but I always want to see what people come up with, and it just kind of it, it makes me, you know, put a little, a little extra energy. Yeah, there. it's cool, and, and you know, as long as it's not like. You know, I'm. Yeah. You know, as long as it's not too far, like I oh, think yeah, it's no, awesome. Cause it's crazy. It, I think it's awesome. Like you said, I think it's awesome because it's like such a good like. You know, I think if more people realize how fun D one soccer was, because I tell people all the time, you watch the national championship game and you watch the NCAA tournament. Like, if no one, if oh, yeah. if you didn't know anything about soccer and you watched that game, you would have thought that was a professional game. Like, the, oh yeah, for sure. It's it's unreal the level of of D one soccer. Um, so I I like to ask people this, but it's easy to answer mm-hmm. when you don't have as many options as you had. Um, mm-hmm. when someone's consider because we see a lot of people take like gap years and things like yeah, that. For sure. Um. And, you know, I have mixed feelings about it. Uh, to me, if, you know, D1's on the table, you should, that's, that should be the option, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and, and I'll just, you know, just my opinion is, like, if, if D1's on the table and, you know, you have that route available to you, especially when pro is still available, um, it this makes more sense to me. But for, for you... Yeah. When a player is trying to navigate the system, um, yep. what's your opinion and what's your advice to them when, you know, D1, yeah. second team, gap year, things like that? Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll look at my own experience and just kind of use that. You know, I think the whole time up until coming to school, I think from my junior year, which was the, you know, year I started to take off up until, you know, the last almost minute. I was always considering, you know, is it better to go pro now? Is it better to do this? Or what? what's best for my career and what I want to do? And obviously, I love soccer. It, you know, it's my favorite thing to do. I, If I could, I would play 24 hours a day and not, you know, I'd be content with it. So I think you really have to look at what's best for you, like you personally. I Like I said, you always want to play soccer. I think one thing that I looked at and my parents looked at and I understand their thinking is soccer it, it's not a given the sport is not a given you know you spot you sign a contract it's great whatever but you always have to go out and perform and I think sometimes people get trapped in you know they see a contract and they want to jump on it and I, you know I, anybody would want to jump on it but is that necessarily best for what you're looking for you know i think my my family is very academically motivated and they're like you know we still see the pro option being available to you but is it best to go secure your um your academics in your future if something were to happen and obviously no one wants to think that but acl gets torn you know something goes wrong you're not able to play anymore you don't want to go, I signed the second team contract at 17 and I'm 19 and no longer able to play because then your college eligibility is gone. Like so many things can go wrong. You know, I think 
it, one of my friends took a gap year and he's right now going through, do I go to college? Do I go sign pro? And I was like, oh, what do you want to do? And he's like, I want to go play pro. I was like, then look for the pro option. But that I think that's only if if that's really what you want to do. And I, and I say that like, I obviously want to go pro. I want to play professional. Right. I want to make it as far as possible. I was like, is that the smartest thing to do? Like, do you want to go jump on a contract where not, not anything's guaranteed, whatever, and just go and then you're trapped in two, three years. And so I'd say to all the, you know, younger people, I would say with these events that MLS Next or whatever league you're playing in, ECNL, whatever, try to, I mean, it's hard to say that, but try to show out at these events, not do anything crazy. You know, you don't need to be rainbowing people in your box, whatever, but just go and play and show that you have a hunger for the game. And people, coaches will see that. Professional coaches will see that. D1 coaches will see that. I think GA Cup um, was where I think stuff really started to get going for me. I, I had a little bit of an edge going into that tournament and I, and I was like, I want to perform. I want to play whatever. And I, I think I came back, came out of GA Cup and this is like not a flex, not to flex yeah. anything. Just, so I just want to show, I, think I came back with like 30, 35 coaches just off. The, it's well still at the tournament that were like, Hey, can we get on a phone call? Can we do this? Can we get you on a zoom? Whatever. And that was day two of the tournament, and it's a nine-day tournament. You know, I think you just go, you go play. It doesn't matter if it's a professional coach or a D1 coach. They'll, uh, they won't try to steer you wrong. I think, you know, with the people I've talked to, they're like, do do what fits you best. You know, a lot of people you see, you know, Ben Hot, for example. I, I played with Ben Hot at National Team Camp. His career took off. You know, he started playing, Messi can it even turned better. And he's doing extremely well. But not every kid is going to have that experience. You know, you go and sign, and it's like, ooh, I'm getting no minutes. I'm playing a little bit with the second team. And yeah. I signed this contract, and now I'm, I'm in no man's land. Like, I don't really know. So you always got to do what I think players is need to play. best for you. Yeah, players need to play. And it it seems like it's good to always be in that landscape, but sometimes it's best to take a step away, come back, get, you know, bigger, get stronger, get better. And then boom, you're back into a year, two, two years later. Yeah. And you know, it's crazy. I was actually, somebody showed me the numbers recently, uh, actually two weeks ago. So they're recent numbers and they showed the number of caps for a homegrown from the MLS the homegrown from the USL, and then a homegrown from college, meaning they went to college and then signed mm -hmm. somewhere. And while uh, the MLS had the most homegrowns, when it got towards the 100-game mark, meaning they played 100 games, yep. um, college actually produced the most long-term pros yeah. uh, out, of, out of any of those, those three systems, three paths. And so, you know, and I look at other places that have a U23, you know, league, you know, they have, other, we, we don't have that in in, uh, in the U.S. And yeah. so for me, college is such an awesome, um, you know, awesome system for us because we don't have relegation in the U.S. We yeah. don't have U23 in the U.S. And so it's like for, for us, it's almost like our version of those things. Yeah. And sure. it's such a high level. If you get a chance, if you're lucky enough to play D1, mm -hmm. it's so much room for advancement and so much oh, room yeah. for uh, uh, development. Why, why don't sure. you? Why don't you think? Um, do you think it's the um, lack of of media around D1? Why do you think some people decide to take that gap year? Yeah, I would say, I would say there's so much pressure on wanting to become a pro and wanting to become a pro as fast as possible. Yeah. And I think some people, I think some people think that sooner means better, but mm -hmm. I don't think that's necessarily always the case. Me too. You know, I think th there are always special, special occasions, you know, Alfonso Davies was like, what, 15. And yeah. now this dude, you know, he's <laughs> at Bayern right now, but not everybody's going to be Alfonso Davies. Not everybody's going to be playing at Bayern. So I think, oh, I think it really comes down to like people are like, if I go to college, am I going away from the professional pathway? 
And I think I, I, I would say no. Like, I think. Well, the numbers say no. Seem, yeah, exactly. Numbers say no. And I think you, you just got to do what's best. Like, I think some people try to force the pro path right away, even when they're not ready. And I think, you know, and I, honestly, I, I wanted to do it too. I like I, my parents and the people around me, like, I, you know, I, I still, I, I'm a kid. You know, I want to yeah. do whatever. I won't die. I make, you know, unreasonable decisions sometimes. <laughs> so, you know, I I just was wanted to go and do it. But they're like, you know, it's not smart. If you, is it, it's better for you to go for, you know, your year or two or however long. Go get cultivated in soccer. Get physically bigger. Go, go improve academically. And then hit the scene in a year or two. I agree. And see, and see what improvement that does for you. And I think a lot of people are sometimes scared of that, to, to take that chance. And it's a chance, but so is every, you know, so is everything you're going to do. So I think, you know, people are just scared to almost hit that landscape. To and trust the process. To tr- and trust the process. You know, I think you, it, it, a certain extent, it just comes down to if you're willing to put in that work and put in that time and really show that it, you know this is what you want to do I, I i love that um and i think that that type of attitude right like trusting the process and is why college has been more successful in producing long-term pros um so future wise you know you've you had a crazy freshman year uh mm-hmm. for people who don't know starting even playing as a freshman is impressive, uh, but you started a lot of games this year. What is yeah. your what What is the next uh, couple years look like for you? Yeah, you know, I think I obviously gonna try over the summer go back play with St. Louis City, um, go there, train with them, and even if it's not with them, just train with pros. I think that's you know, oh, you always want to be playing with people older than you. Um, you can be better than you, faster than you, stronger. You always want to be doing that. You always want to be pushing um, as much as possible. Pr- probably, hit, you know, most likely hit the scene for scene two or for season two next year in college. And then after that, I mean, we'll see where it takes us. But I think right now that's the plan. I, you know, the freshman season was, I told you, after we got over that patch, it was, I think it starts 17 out of 18 games, you know, was yeah. really – that's crazy. You know, we were we're flying. You know, I did you know did pretty well. Um, <laughs> our for, our formation, it you know there was a there was a, a bit of a load on um, on my shoulders, and I think we did well with that load. No, I love that, bro. And if you were to uh, give advice for um, someone who you know is you know younger, just trying just trying to get to academy, what advice would you get to them? Give to them. Yeah, I would say you know. I would say it doesn't have to be immediately. You don't have to hit academy at U eleven to U twelve to be successful. You know, I I don't I didn't step into an academy until U fifteen year, and even if say I you know stopped playing soccer, I'd say my youth career or you know youth experience was pretty successful. So I think. People, like I said, people think that better or earlier is better. It's not necessarily the case. You can hit a, an academy your U seventeen year and shoot and take off. And by your U nineteen, U twenty year, you can be playing, you can be starting, whatever. So, I would just give the advice to focus, focus on yourself. Like you, obviously, you're gonna see people around you. You know, you see. Uh, Lumini Mall at Barcelona, dude, sixteen, killing it over there. Like you always see that, and you're like, am I doing this right? Am I? I'm doing whatever. Everybody, everybody's on a different trajectory, and just because you don't hit where he, where this person's at at fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, doesn't mean that you're on the wrong path. You know, everybody develops at a different rate, and people think that if you're not on the scene by, you know, 19 or 18, you're not going to be successful. I mean, Jamie Vardy didn't hit the Premier League till what, 27, whatever. Like, you yeah. know, you got to give it time. And I would say just take just take some of the stress away of you, old, like, 
you know, you just just train and just keep your head down and stay focused. And I, I, I don't want to say I guarantee it'll work out, but there's a high probability it'll work out unless if you stay focused on your path and your mission over, you know, what somebody over here is doing or what somebody over there is doing. No, that's an excellent answer, man. It's an excellent answer. Um, so if, if, uh, I, I'll let you go cause I know you're busy, but if you have a message to us national team, Northwestern and St. Louis fans, uh, what would it be? Yeah. I mean, I just want to say thank you. I, I really, like, I've really enjoyed what I've done, um, over the past couple of years. I, I think the future, the future looks up. I obviously, I just want to keep playing soccer. I want to get as far as I can playing soccer. And I, you know, just, I appreciate the opportunities that have been given to me. And I just want to, I just want to keep moving forward with it. That's, that's amazing, bro. Every, and I just want to say like everyone that I've had on the podcast, um, I try to get, you know, top players who I believe in and, and uh, who I also think have the right head on their shoulders to, to kind of communicate and they all have a similar message and uh, but you were particularly impressive with uh, your responsive, how thoughtful and appre- the appreciation that you have for the game and everyone around you uh, really comes through. And um, I think anybody who has that type of mentality will do well. Um, on top of that, pe- people that I, be- you know, that uh, I appreciate their opinion and I believe in their opinion have super high praise for you. Uh, and so I think that all, you know, the proof is in the pudding, as they say. Yeah. And so I, I just know the sky's the limit for you. Um, I think you're one of those young, exciting, uh, I'll, you know, say new age center back defenders who are just going to change the game of soccer. And I mean that. Uh, so, uh, man, uh, congratulations on all the success. Thank and I you. really thank look you. forward to seeing you in the future. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. I'll you know, let you know when I'm back in Miami. Thank you for having me on. It's honestly been a pleasure and love to do it again soon.